Bibliophiles of the Internet. My name is Adriana and today I'm here with my October wrap up. In all honesty, October was a very, very busy month in terms of work and school, so I didn't get to read very much, but I'm still pretty impressed with what I did manage to read in spite of life's craziness, so I think I should just get started. The first book I read in October was The Accidental Afterlife of Thomas Marsden by Emma Trevane. This is a middle grade novel about a young boy named Thomas Marsden who is a grave robber, it's kind of the family business, and then one night he digs up an unmarked grave and he finds his own body. I really wanted to like this book, but I just didn't. On paper, this book seems to have all the right elements going for it. There is this quirky premise, this aura of impossibility, there is magic and fairies and a grand adventure involved, and I kept waiting for the story to get off the ground and to make me feel something, but it just didn't. And even though this story involved fantastical elements and magic, it just seemed to lack that easy, whimsical air that most middle grade novels have. The story itself felt a bit rushed and underdeveloped, and overall it just didn't work for me. So while I certainly didn't hate this book, I also didn't wholly enjoy it either, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Then over the course of the month I read the first three volumes of Blue Exorcist by Kazu Kato. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this manga series. The main character Rin Okumura wants to be the greatest exorcist in all the world, but things get a little bit complicated when he finds out that he is actually the son of Satan. Originally I had wanted to read the first seven volumes of this manga series, but by the time I got to the third, I realized that I wasn't feeling as taken with this series as I had hoped I would be. Again, there was nothing inherently wrong with this series. I do think there are a lot of intriguing elements in this story, like the dynamic between the two brothers, the exorcist cram school, and the fact that Rin is fighting his own nature in the name of justice and protecting those that he loves. Those are all things that intrigue me. I'm just not really feeling like I want to continue with this series right now. Honestly, I think this might be a case where this series actually translates better as an anime, and I think I would really enjoy the anime much more than the manga series, so what I might do is I might watch the anime series eventually and then come back to the manga series and read it with this newfound appreciation for the story. Ultimately, while I did enjoy the first three volumes in this manga series, I didn't think they were great, so I gave them all a three and a half out of five stars. Then I read a book for school, actually for a fantasy class I'm currently taking, and that was Swords Point by Ellen Kushner. I actually referred to this book in my last discussion video about reading diversely and how we discuss queer lit, and I referenced this as a piece of queer fantasy, so if you've been looking into more queer SFF, this might be something you want to read. This is a fantasy of manners, and the main character, Richard St. Vier, is a swordsman. He's a sword for hire, and all the members of nobility pay him to do their dirty work until one day he dispatches the wrong man and his actions are met with outrage within the community. It's full of action and intrigue and romance. Like I said, this is a fantasy of manners, so a lot of the story is preoccupied with parlor politics and the scandals of the nobility, but I thought that was very fascinating because that really allowed the story to examine the dynamic between nobility and the common folk because Richard St. Vier and his lover Alec are both commoners, yet they have their connections to the nobility or they work for the nobility, so there's an interesting dynamic there. And really the story is about how those who have the money have the power and make the rules and how usually it's in everyone else's best interest to be in their good graces, that is, until doing so interferes with your honor. So like I said, I thought this was a really great book and overall I found it to be an extremely satisfying read, so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Then I finished up a trilogy and I read Ancillary Mercy by Anne Leckie. Obviously I can't tell you much about this third book specifically, but generally this is part of a sci-fi trilogy. It is a space opera. The main character is named Breck and she is an ancillary unit with artificial intelligence. One day she receives orders that she really doesn't like and that causes her to break away from her ship and go rogue so that she can get revenge on the leader of this intergalactic empire. Also, have I mentioned, it's really freaking cool. There's really not much to say. This third and final book was everything that I wanted it to be and more. It was such a satisfying conclusion to what is a solid trilogy that at its heart is really about marginalized characters regaining 
maintain their agency. And that is a very important theme. It's very important to me, but even more than that, it's done exceedingly well throughout the course of this trilogy. So of course, I love it. This trilogy is absolutely incredible. It's on its own level. And of course, I gave Ed Sillery Mercy five out of five stars. Then I read Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I buddy read this one with Ivan from Sona Azra and we came out of it just fine, but we weren't necessarily impressed. I really don't want to spend too much time talking about this book, so I will link my Goodreads review down below. What really bothered me about this book was the fact that this story really failed to encompass what feels like a huge and expansive world, which actually ends up feeling underdeveloped and underexplored. Clearly Rainbow Rowell has not experienced a shortage of ideas in terms of this world because she basically threw everything but the kitchen sink in this book, and as a result there are so many plot lines and ideas ideas that are fighting against each other and competing for our attention that it makes it difficult to read this book smoothly or to know where to feel invested. Also, it's really difficult to feel grounded in this world because the story just drops you into Simon and Baz's eighth and final year at Watford School of Magics and that's really difficult because a lot of the history that exists between these characters and in this specific place only exist off the page and in a past that we don't have access to as readers and even though we are filled in a little bit along the way it's not quite the same as experiencing those things alongside those characters and really feeling like those relationships are fully developed. I really could go on and on about all my problems with this book but like I said I don't want to spend too much time on this one. Suffice to say I was very disappointed with this story and I would not personally recommend it and while I did enjoy this story I only gave it a three out of five stars and even that I think might be a little bit too generous. And the last thing I read in October was Witches by Scott Snyder. This is a really creepy graphic novel. It was given to me by Kristen from Cap89X for my birthday so thank you again Kristen. I do have this one but I'm actually lending it out to a friend. Like I said, this is a creepy horror graphic novel about this town where if you pledge someone to the witches, which are these very scary, primal, almost alien-like creatures, then they will disappear and be taken by the witches, and in return, the witches will grant you whatever wish you want. The artwork is fantastic, the characters are all complex and intriguing, but more importantly, like I said, the story itself is just so creepy and scary and driven by this intense and persistent sense of tension that was really great and kept me on the edge of my seat and really freaked me out. So I just thought it was such a great volume overall. I'm not saying it was perfect, but I really enjoyed it. So in the end, I gave Witches Volume 1 4 out of 5 stars. So those were all the books I read in October. In the comments down below, please let me know if you have read any of the books I discussed today because I would love to know your thoughts. But that is everything I had for this October wrap up today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the flip side of the page.